Good Wednesday morning, friends, or afternoon, or evening, or perhaps even middle of the night, if you happen to catch this when you can't sleep. For those that I don't know, I'm Reverend Jennifer Finley, our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor here at Kirksville First United Methodist Church. And this is our time to gather each and every week on Wednesdays to take a deep breath together, to wonder together about where God is meeting us in our world, where God is working in our world. Um, it's time to have coffee together if you're still drinking coffee this morning or your tea um, or whatever you might be doing at this moment. It is a time to simply settle in take a deep breath together and wonder about God together. Now, uh, as I was enjoying the, uh, the devotion from yesterday from Teresa Eads, who talked about how our world feels heavy in some ways right now, whether it's personal or whether it is out in the world, there's a lot swirling and sometimes that can feel overwhelming. And so today I thought I would talk a little bit about one of the ways, one of the things that helps me ground me when the world around feels overwhelming or when I'm not quite sure how to find my footing in the changes in the world around me. Um, one of those things for me is acknowledging that calendars and that cycles and seasons overlap and that changing seasons meets us in different ways at different times. And uh, some of you may know that I am, I'm a church nerd. I grew up in the United Methodist Church. I was the kid that was always around the church building. Um, I was probably the kid that drove Sunday school teachers a little nuts because I was willing to ask the hard question that maybe they weren't wanting someone to ask. But I had adults that met me with grace in all of that. Um, so I like to talk about things within our faith tradition that help ground us when our world is swirling. For me, one of those is our church calendar, not the full calendar of all of the um, things we do, but the ways in which our church seasons help us live into the rhythms that are maybe a little bit different than what we would normally live into in our world. Um, it helps me mark changing seasons. Uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of things because show and tell is fun. Um, this will be backwards, I know, for you. But this is a representation of the church year. Um, this is another one that's a little bit bigger that I've done with kids before. What you'll notice is that's a circle. So it is a circle of time that we come back to every year. Um, so on this one, you'll notice that... Um, there's Pentecost and I'll start there because that's where we've been. It's just a little sliver of red right there because um, Pentecost is one Sunday. Um, but then we move into what this calls the season after Pentecost or sometimes we call it common time. It's a really good sized chunk of that circle and runs from the end of Pentecost all the way up until we get to Advent. That's usually right around Thanksgiving on our cultural calendars. So that's a good chunk of time. Um, and then we get to that season of preparation for Christmas that we call Advent and that time of anticipation and waiting. Um, traditionally, that color is often purple or blue, depending on where you are. And then there's a little sliver of white for Christmas. And as some of you know, um, when you hear me talk about this, Christmas isn't simply a day, but it's, it's the 12 days of Christmas until we get to Epiphany. And then we have another season of green that we sometimes call common time or the season after Epiphany. And then we get to Lent, um, that preparation time again for Easter. And then we get to Easter, which is actually extends well beyond just one Sunday of Easter Sunday through the 50 days until we get to Pentecost. Um, now what you'll notice about this or about my homemade larger one that I that you can move a, a needle around like a clock 
is that it's a circle. It cycles every single year. And it provides a rhythm that's a little bit different than the other rhythms in our lives. And every year, that rhythm interacts differently with what's happening in our lives. So some years, for example, I come to Pentecost and I am ready and excited and I am ready to wave my, my banners high and wear my red and Pentecost is this giant celebration, sometimes called the birthday of the church. But then there are other years where whatever is happening in my own heart and soul or what's happening in the world has me more reflective more leaning into what is the Holy Spirit saying to me this year in Pentecost. And we talked a little bit about that together on Sunday, if you worship with us on Sunday morning. This church rhythm, this cycle that happens every year, interacts with all kinds of calendars in our own lives, all kinds of cycles in our own lives. Um, you could talk about overlapping calendars, so to speak. Um, I find that an incredibly powerful and grounding tool, um, whether it's in worship together online or in person, or whether it's in my own spiritual practices, that fact that these come every year and meet me differently every year and God meets me differently is one way that I find grounding in the swirl of all of the things in our world. And so I wanted to share with you as part of that um, from a book that uh, a friend and parishioner gave me. It's called Sounding of the Seasons. And it gives voice to some of this idea of cycles and the ways in which God meets us in the overlaps. And this one is um, written by Malcolm Geit. And this is the very beginning. They're written in sonnet form, but maybe just hear this as a word to you. It's called Sounding the Seasons. Tangled in time, we go by hints and guesses, turning the wheel of each returning year. But in the midst of failures and successes, we sometimes glimpse the love that casts out fear. Sometimes the heart remembers its own reasons and beats a sanctus as we sing our story. Tracing the threads of grace, sounding the seasons that lead at last through time to timeless glory. From the first yearning for a savior's birth to the full joy of knowing sins forgiven, we start our journey here on God's good earth to catch an echo of the choirs of heaven. I send these out, returning what was lent, turning to praise each moment's monument. The part that caught me and I wanted to share with you was this acknowledgement that sometimes we are tangled in time. We are tangled in all that is part of our lives. That's not always a bad thing, but sometimes we feel as though we are going simply by hints and guesses, trying to make our way, doing the next best thing together. And we're doing that as this wheel of the church seasons is also turning. And in the midst of all of the things that we would count as failures or successes, we catch glimpses of love that cast out fear. That's one of the things that the spiritual practice of observing this cycle of the church year helps me do is catch glimpses of that love that casts out fear. And then I wanted to share a little bit about Pentecost because as we just have celebrated Pentecost this last Sunday, this particular celebration in the church year, Malcolm Geit has this poem. Today we feel the wind beneath our wings. Today the hidden fountain flows and plays. Today the church draws breath at last and sings as every flame becomes a tongue of praise. This is the feast of fire, air and water poured out and breathed and kindled into earth. The earth herself awakens to her maker, translated out of death and into birth. The right words come today in their right order and every word spells freedom and release. Today, the gospel crosses every border. All tongues are loosened by the Prince of Peace. Today, the lost are found in his translation, whose mother tongue is love in every nation. On Sunday, we talked about how in that moment of Pentecost, in the pouring out of the spirit, 
The Spirit enabled understanding. We talked about how the Spirit sometimes speaks to us in a heart language, in a heart language that maybe goes beyond our intellectual understanding. And in this poem, I think there's a bit of that. In every word spells freedom and release. Today, the lost are found in this translation, whose mother tongue is love. Catch that thread weaving through the rhythms of our cycles of the church year is this thread of love. And that, that I find incredibly grounding, that recognition that the mother tongue of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is indeed love. Now on Sunday, we use these streamers as part of our prayer to represent the Holy Spirit and our openness to the Holy Spirit. Today, as I'm sitting here and there's still some hanging out here in our sanctuary and on our balcony, to me this morning, they're speaking of that thread of love that weaves through all that we do, even when we can't always catch a glimpse of it. And so today I'm wondering, we ask that question every week, where have you seen God at work in our world? Sometimes that question is hard to answer when there's so much hard things swirling in our world. So today my question is, where are you seeing that thread of love weaving in and out? Where are you catching a glimpse of that thread of love that speaks to your heart? I hope that you were to share that, whether it's in a comment here or in an email or a text message, share with a friend, share with somebody else. We're happy to be your conversation partners for that. Where are you catching that thread of love that weaves throughout it all. And if you would like to be a little bit church nerdy along with me and you'd like a reminder of how these cycles, this other way of being in the world with the time of the church, how that interacts in our lives, this fun little reminder is actually a sticker. So if you like stickers, I have several of these in my office. So feel free to stop by and grab one if you would like. That's only one of the tools in our spiritual toolbox to find grounding in our world. Um, we're going to talk about some of those other tools in these next few weeks together. But for the moment, friends, go out to the world in this week, whatever happens in your lives, to look for that thread of love. Go in peace.